Brussels is one of the capitals that have made the history of Europe and the architecture of its Grand Place testifies to its grandeur through the ages. The administrative and cultural center of the Burgundian Netherlands under Philippe Le Bon, then the Austrian Netherlands, then through its artistic aura under the Spanish regime, ended up becoming the heart of European institutions. When you're in love with the charms of late 17th century architecture, or Art Nouveau, it's impossible not to stop over here and stroll between its streets and its galleries. Among its unusual places and traditions, like a lucky charm, you have to come and rub the arm of the recumbent statue of Everard Sercles, a member of a large Brussels family in the Middle Ages and ardent defender of the rights of the city, which cost him his life. Or stroke the dog at his feet, make a wish, and you're sure to return to Brussels one day. It's at the end of this street which touches the Grand Place that we discover a real institution. The unmissable hotel in the city of Brussels, the Rocco Forte Hotel Amigo. Who does not know the sober and solemn facade of the hotel that everyone simply calls the Amigo? This five-star hotel, which stands all in elegance and discretion in the heart of Brussels, is a legend. All the intelligentsia of the capital have always met there, and the palace hides behind its high red brick walls a number of visits and meetings of personalities who are the jet set of international cinema, culture or sport, not to mention the highest representatives of world politics. When this five-star hotel opens its doors to you, it's you who are now part of its legend. Most of its customers will tell you it's like coming home. Your Brussels house awaits your return. With a touch of Belgianness and humor, mixing kindness, simplicity, dedication to its customers, and excellent service. This is what, what we try and, and, and make a focus on. It's, it's, it's this that, you know, we don't say no, uh, that we try and keep this personal touch. We have, we have a, a tremendous amount of regular guests that come here, um, and some of them are, 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 you know, have become friends over the years uh, with a lot of people. Uh, we do cater for, for a lot of well-known personalities and heads of state. Obviously, Brussels is the center of EU and, and NATO, so there are a lot of heads of states that come through, and even the heads of states that have become rather regular guests of the hotel. And you know, know and, and we know that there's some of them, they feel it like really it is their second home. They go to a lot of hotels, but we know from their staff, they are totally in a different mode when they come to this hotel because of, of this touch of the, of the personal feel that they get for, and, and we let the staff as well do, do what it takes to, to make them happy and, and connect with them. The concierge of Amigo is full of anecdotes about its famous clientele, but he will not tell you them. He's very discreet, yet his job offers him the opportunity to live exceptional adventures worthy of the intrepid little Belgian reporter who's everywhere. I was called by a foreign client who was selling a business in France, in Western France, to a Chinese client, and the Chinese were landing in Paris, and they had to go by helicopter from Paris to Western France, and they were particularly fond of the Loire castles. So we had to organize a flight plan with a helicopter pilot to be able to go from Paris to their destination, but flying over the whole Loire region and the different castles of the Loire. That's really the thing that comes straight to my mind. Besides that, there were other little discreet or less discreet anecdotes, but we have little episodes like that from time to time, which are funny. In Brussels, we have, it's a city that's very interesting from different points of view. We already have, in terms of tourism, there's a lot to see. It's a city that we love a lot because it's been refined over time, and in terms of art, too. There are more and more art galleries opening up in Brussels, which attract foreign clients, a high-end clientele. And we can also leave Brussels 
to go and see great cities outside of Brussels. Of course, that's something that I particularly like to do, to introduce our country to guests, not just Brussels, the rest of the country as well. Concierge who make up a whole team, each with their own specialty. Each concierge is a specialist in a very specific field. So we have an art concierge, who in fact represents all the art in Brussels. We also have a cultural concierge, Christian, a gastronomy concierge, Alouk. So you have the first name of my colleagues as well. And we also have myself, who's a concierge, how to say, of other cities, of other visits to be organized in Belgium. And so we have also a family concierge, Jean, who deals with all the walks to be done with the children, the amusement parks, the museums, which are interesting for the children. The Armand Blaton suite, named after the hotel's founder, is undoubtedly the jewel of this legendary palace. This is where the whole story unfolds. The Amigo Hotel was uh, originally built for the World Exhibition here in uh, Brussels in 1958. It was then acquired by uh, Sir Rocco Forte around the millennium. Uh, so about 20 years it's been in, in the ownership of the family. This 180 square meter suite under the roof displays an anthology of contemporary furniture that gives it a chic apartment feel like this Barcelona armchair by Mies van der Rohe. Works of art, colorful fabrics, and precious objects carefully chosen by Olga Polizzi, the younger sister of Sirocco Forti who took care to personalize each room of the hotels of the group as the interior designer. The hotel was constructed then by a, a big family in construction in Belgium called the Blaton family uh, and the head of the family, Armand Blaton. So when Sorocco took over the hotel in, in uh, around 2000, we did develop the suite as the Armand Platon suite. Now, in the design, what uh, Olga Polizzi has made a lot of effort to, and she does that in all the hotels that we have, is I think what's unique about our group is this that she tries to tie in the typical luxury hotel and with a lot of touches of local touches. So she goes into a lot of research in each destination to really come up with specificities. So we got, we got a lot of Flemish and old um, Belgian art in the hotel and, and just touch us over. All this without counting the exceptional view from the suite, a panoramic terrace from which you can admire the whole city of Brussels and more. The window opens onto the Gothic tower of the neighboring town hall. A town hall that can be reached directly and in complete discretion. If you feel like marrying your partner, having been bewitched by the romantic charm of the Grand Place. Another atmosphere, another decor, the Magritte Suite, dedicated to the most famous painter of Belgian surrealism, is full of color. Here, its walls have heard many private conversations of illustrious politicians who've created the world today. But it's once again the decoration that interests us recalling the works of René Magritte and thus inviting you to visit his eponymous museum to deepen your knowledge of the master with more than 200 works, sculptures and photographs. So we do have a Magritte suite and of course you are in, in Brussels and in Belgium and probably Belgium has the highest density of people doing 
cartoons, or bande dessinée, as we call it here, and probably the most famous one is maybe on a global scale is Tintin, possibly because he's had a movie published that was directed by Steven Spielberg, uh, which suddenly adds to the um, to the famousness of, of Tintin, Haddock, uh, uh, and his little dog, the Milou. It's impossible not to end your visit to the hotel without visiting this suite dedicated to the most famous little Belgian reporter, Tintin. Here, a little cuddly Snowy, sidekick of the paper hero, a coloring book and other surprises await the youngest of the Amigo residents, who will slip into their Rocco Forti branded bathrobes wiser than ever before plunging into a restful sleep populated by the accomplices of the imaginary adventurer. And as soon as possible, the Comic Strip Museum, a stone's throw from the hotel, will complete the immersion into the world of Belgian cartoons, which is full of characters enjoying other Brussels adventures.